Derek for the Eustace table. Bravura, a horse with a reputation, a lovely individual. He moved very well today. I was impressed. Yeah, Neil, and he, he worked off in a rush, which is a very smart workhorse. Um, and if you know Bravura's history, he's a horse that can hardly come out of a canter in the mornings. He hates working. Anton Marcus always says it's, uh, he's the most intelligent horse he's ever worked with. He can read and write. So for him to have worked the way he did today with a Rush means he's a very happy horse. And um, yeah, you know, last year we were a little bit unlucky with him. Got beaten by a better horse uh, on the day, as I said earlier. And uh, this year he doesn't carry that Group 1 penalty. So in my opinion, from that draw, I think he, I, I'm not saying he's good enough to beat the Jacksons, Jacksons and the Pomodoros, but uh, he's certainly going to give him a scare. That much I will, will guarantee you. I was chatting to a few people in the crowd early on and they all said if Bravura brings his right frame of mind and his ability to the track, he could upstage them all. Yeah, Neil, Jay has told me in the last couple of weeks that the horse is, is, is the happiest he's seen him in the last two years. He's bucking in the mornings, kicking. He's a, he's a very happy camper for an older horse. A lot, of, a lot went wrong for him in the Queen's Plate, so you know one doesn't know how they come back from that and whether they remember the experience or something like that. So hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully he's not as intelligent as Anton thinks. <laughs> But um, if, he, if he puts his A-game or he brings his A-game to, to the race course, I, I promise you he'll give his other horses a good run for their money. Marcus sends out Hill 54 as well. Uh, he's drawn 14. Are you happy with that or a little bit wide? No, Neil, I'm not happy with that. Um, for, thankfully, we ended up with it by default and I didn't have to go and draw the 14. So, so that was a big relief. Um, but draws, it's not a great draw. Um, I would have preferred somewhere in the first eight for him. But having said that, if you look at his, his style of racing and his last two starts when he won in, in PE and then when he won, yeah, I think he won the, was it the, not the politician, was a politician. The other day, um, he came from a very wide draw and he overcame the draw and went to the front and dictated and still managed to kick away from him in the straight. Um, obviously, it's stronger company this time around than what he met there in both those races. So it, it will take its toll on him. But, um, you know, we'll discuss it with MJ. I think the game plan would be is just to take our time to get across from that draw. It's a long back straight. You don't have to rush him. Get there as economically as possible. Slot in somewhere towards the front of, of the field and, and then take our chances. He is, what I can say about him is I think, you know, a lot of his horses have raced against one another. And I think he's one of those horses that is completely unexposed in this type of company. He's improved a lot since his gelding. And uh, he moved very well this morning. Vaughan's very happy with him. If he was drawn well, I would have said he was a big runner in this race. I'm going to ask you and put you on the spot. One horse, the horse to beat. Neil, I think it'd be stupid not to nominate Jackson as the horse to beat in the race. Um, I just think I've, I've always loved this horse. I've respected him. Every time a variety club's beaten him, I've said, watch out for Jackson. He really has the makings of, of uh, well, he, no, he doesn't have the makings. He is a superb race horse. I respect Pomodoro. I think he's his main danger. But if you had to single out one for me, I'd, I'd say Jackson is the horse to beat.